Hello, the book I'm going to read you today is called When Daddy Prays. It is by Nikki Grimes and it is illustrated by Tim Ladwig. I like this book because it has lots of different poems, but all the poems together tell a story. See, this poem is called A Father's Prayer. And here's the boy and his dad. And this poem goes, this is like the dad is talking. May my children see beyond my muscles to your strength. May they find across my broad shoulders the imprint of your wings. May they feel your love in the hollow of my hand. May they hear your voice in the echo of my words. So that's maybe dad, that dad praying to God that, that his kids will grow up to be strong and kind and caring and love God too. This poem is called When Daddy Prays. When daddy prays, his muscled shoulders shake, his lips become all trembly, and some nights I awake because I hear tears in his voice when daddy prays. When daddy prays, my fear of darkness disappears and angels tiptoe down the hall. I hear them through the door and wall. They whisper in a velvet hush that floats me off to sleep when daddy prays. He's saying sometimes when he wakes up and hears his daddy pray, he can feel the angels with him. This poem is called Daddy Says. Daddy says you rock him in your arms the way he once rocked me. But after he tucks me in and switches off the light, he whispers secrets to you through the night, exactly like I whisper mine to him. But yesterday, I think I heard him say, you're a better listener. So just like a little boy whispers to his dad, his dad whispers to God. But who do you think is the better listener, the little boy or God? This poem is called Like Him. What do you think it's going to be about? See, look, he's dressing in his daddy's clothes. I tip daddy's hat back so I can roll his shirt sleeves up like donuts. Even so, the stripes swallow my arms down to my wrists. His pants would puddle at my ankles if I didn't tie a rope around my waist, but that's okay. They'll fit me one day. I shuffle down the hall, my small feet like tugboats dragging the ships of his shoes. Daddy turns from the altar, smiles, and waves me over. I hurry to him, drop to my knees, and kneel in his shadow. I already know what to say. Our Father, whose heart is heaven. So he's pretending to be like his dad. Have you ever dressed up like a grown-up that you love and tried to be like them? This poem is called Baby Brother. They sent him home half finished, still scrunched up like a brown package. You should have ironed him out first if you ask me, but daddy doesn't seem to notice. Last night he leaned over that wrinkled creature in the bib sleeping in what used to be my crib. Make me a godly man, he said. Help me show this little one exactly how it's done. I punched my pillow, jealous as could be, till daddy asked the Lord to please watch over me. So look, he's got a new baby brother and it's in his crib. And look, it's, it's tough to see, but you can see that he's crying. He maybe feels sad that the baby's there and he maybe he feels like his dad doesn't have time for him. It says he feels jealous. That means you want what somebody else has. And he, he heard his daddy praying for his brother and he wanted the daddy to pray for him too. And did he? This poem is called Home Run. The pitcher stabs the ground with a sneakered toe, rocks back, cranks his arm and whoosh. There's a fast, hard stare. His snarling lips dare me to step up to the plate, but I don't scare easy. I grip that bat like it's a branch and I'm the tree and we are one. And I hear my daddy's cries rise from the stands. Rip a line drive, smash a grounder, go better, go better, go. Sweet Jesus, sail that ball over the wall. He heard his daddy's cheering for him and that helped him to be a great baseball player. This poem is called Lost and Found. 
He felt inside his pockets. He checked the dresser drawer. He peeked beneath the sofa and felt around the floor. I offered my assistance when I found him on his knees, muttering to himself about a set of missing keys. So why did he start laughing when I told him what to do? Ask God to help you find it, like you always tell me to. Sometimes when people lose things, they might say a prayer that they can find them. This poem is called Earth Angel. Daddy said he needed my help. Said nobody can weed like me. And he's right. Even Grandma says, that boy's got the touch. So I hopped in the truck and rode with him across town to old Mrs. Haynes' house. I did my expert weed pulling in her yard while Daddy pruned her apple apricot sapling and trimmed her bushes and manicured her lawn. He paused halfway through the job, turned his face to the sun and mumbled something. What's that, Daddy? I asked. I was just giving thanks, he said. It's not every day a man's got good health and good work and a good weed puller at his side. I grinned, yanked another stubborn dandelion from the dirt and thanked the gardener for giving me the touch. So look, he and his dad went to go help somebody else. It says that it's an old, an old woman, so maybe she can't do her yard work anymore. And not only is that a really kind thing for them to do, the boy said thank you to God for giving him the talents to be a good weed puller. This poem is called Confession. That's when you tell people what you did wrong. I scarred the kitchen tile with mud. It's true. I cranked the TV volume high and maybe slammed the screen door once or twice. But what does all that have to do with rollerblades left in the hall? Did you trip over them again and fall? Is that what makes you grind your teeth and glare at me and shout, God, please? Is that what the fuss is about? You need to pray for patience, Dad. Jesus wouldn't get this mad. What happened? See, he tripped over the rollerblades. And the kid is saying, well, Jesus wouldn't get mad. That's true, Jesus probably wouldn't get mad. But guess what? We're all people, and sometimes we do get mad. That's okay, but you shouldn't yell or hurt anybody when you get upset. You have to have patience. Patience is hard sometimes. Even grown-ups get impatient. This poem is called Lessons in Grace. For rice and beans and turnip greens, for rugged hope and sturdy limbs, these calloused hands and grateful hymns we raise. It's like a thank you for dinner. Mom made oxtail soup for supper like she did the other night. Oxtail soup with peas and carrots like we ate the other night. I got a whiff of oxtail, but there was no meat in sight. I started to complain, but Daddy stilled me with a look. I muttered and I moaned till Daddy chilled me with that look. Lord, he said, we thank you, like you taught us in your book. Do you think he likes what he has for dinner? Sometimes if you have the same thing a lot, you might not like it anymore, but it's okay to say thank you to God for still giving you something. This poem is called Bus Stop. He paced along the yellow line of the bus stop, pretending patience and faking calm but his eyes half shut and his trembling lips silently saying, Jesus, 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 warned anyone watching that he was sick with worry and he might explode with it at any moment. Hi, Daddy, I called, hopping off the number two bus. Sorry I'm late, but my mumbled excuses were cut short because he swung me in the air, held me there safe in time, whispering, thank you, Lord, thank you. You can pray anytime to God. It looks like Daddy was nervous that maybe he gotten lost or he wasn't coming home. He's so excited. And God was hearing his prayers while he was nervous. This poem is called Hot Head. In our house, Monday nights are holy as Sunday. At least that's what you'd think, the way Daddy makes us tiptoe in and out of the living room while he coaches TV football from an easy chair. But last night, I didn't care about touchdowns or passes. My head was on fire, and I ran into the room, scrambled up on Daddy's knee, and clutched him, moaning, hoping he had water to put out the blaze. And he did, because in the sudden hush, he laid hands on me and whispered, 
Father, have mercy. So even though football is very important to his dad, the little boy is more important. Sometimes when you're not feeling good, the best thing is to have a rat that you love with you. This story is called December Morning, or this poem. Daddy takes his early morning post at the window. Worry lines his walnut brow. He bows his head, skips the small talk, and quietly ticks off the troubles that litter our street like broken glass. He asks God to meet me at the corner, wielding an invisible broom to sweep aside whatever dangerous slivers I might miss. Unseen, I linger near Daddy's bedroom door, hear him blasting this day's evil in Jesus' name. Then I rush outside, laughing off the winter's chill and feeling warm and fearless. He was asking God and Jesus to watch over his son. And it makes his son, the little boy, feel good. This poem is called Watch Night. I yawn and fidget in the pew, hypnotized by candlelight, counting down the final minutes of this year's final night. My eyelids flutter, chasing sleep. I fight to lift my drooping chin. The organist tunes up the pipes as the faithful trickle in. At 12 o'clock, my father kneels to consecrate the coming year with psalms of praise and prayers of hope left ringing in God's ear. Look, they were at church real late. It's the last night of the year. It's New Year's Eve. And just as it turns in from New Year's Eve to the new year, Daddy prays. And look, isn't that beautiful? I hope you liked these poems. I'll read to you later.